Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a top five in a while. At least I don't feel like I have. And I've been working on this top five for quite a bit of time because I wanted to do like a before and after picture to correlate with each foundation that I talk about. And today I'm talking about my top five longest lasting foundations, meaning how long does it last on the skin while still looking like it did when I first applied it? Now, obviously, there may be some slight differences. There was one foundation that I'll talk about, I feel like kind of one over everything, where I felt like I really couldn't see much difference at all. But yeah, there's gonna be some slight differences to these. But what I looked for was, did it still look fresh at the end of the day? Did it patch off? Did I look super shiny? All of that kind of thing. And so what I did was I started out with what I thought were like my top 10 out of my collection. And I did a full day wear test for all of them, which was 11 hours for each one. And then I picked the top five best looking ones out of those. So while I have many that I feel like last all day, and if I've done a review on them and I've said, yes, they've lasted all day, I didn't lie, they do. It's just these kind of are at the top of the leaderboard when it comes to staying fresh looking all day. I am not gonna spend a ton of time on each foundation because obviously they all last all day. I might speak on what their finish is. I'll tell you what shade I am. But really, the culmination of this video is just the fact that I don't have to worry about these foundations. When I put them on in the morning, I know that no matter what I do, what I get into, it's gonna look decent slash good slash great by the end of the night. I did keep it consistent and use the same setting powder and highlight and bronzer for all of these. I used the Air Perez Highlight in, what is this? I should know, vanilla, no. It's the Vanilla Highlighter in Falling Star, so I used that, that's what I have on today. I used the Sigma Bronzer, which I don't have over here, but it's the matte bronzer, and then the Fit Glow Beauty Bamboo Setting Powder, which has become probably the number one setting powder for me this year. I don't know how I'm not already out, but I do have a backup. I just, I don't want to be without this. I love it so much. So I used those consistently for all of these. So all of the pictures are going to have those products. I did change up the blush, but really I feel like that doesn't really change how the foundation looks. So let's go ahead and start out in no particular order. The first one I'm going to talk about is actually the one that I have in my kit out of all of these. It's the one that I have used the longest out of all of these. It's the one that I feel like I trust the most on pretty much everyone, hence the reason I have in my kit. The NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I've talked about this a lot because I have used it for a very long time. I am personally in the shade Patagonia, which is medium with neutral undertones. There are 34 shades available in this foundation. It retails for $42. Actually, it's a very good price point because this has one and a half ounces of product in it where most foundations only have one ounce. So you're getting 50% more for that $42 price point. This is exactly what it says it is. It is a soft matte foundation. You do not need a lot of this at all. And I feel like if I've ever seen a bad review of this, it's from someone who I may watch using it and they use probably four times as much as they need. Yes, I would hate it too if I used that much. You need a very, very small amount. A little goes a very long way. It is matte, but as the name implies, it's a soft matte. It doesn't, to me, accentuate anything you don't want accentuated. And out of the, all the ones that I'm gonna talk about, there's another one that's kind of a close second, but this one is by far my favorite mixing foundation, meaning it can be manipulated in so many beautiful ways by adding a moisturizer to it, by adding a liquid illuminator to it, by mixing it with another very luminous foundation. You can cut down the matte, but what this will do when you're adding it to anything else is prolong the anything else you're adding it to because it truly does stick around all day. But quite honestly, I just trust this so much. It always lasts forever on me. It lasts forever on my clients. And even if I have a client who says they have dry skin, I can again manipulate this with skin prep and mixing it to work for them and last all day and look great while also being able to use this straight out of the bottle on my super oily clients and know it's going to work great and look good all day. So NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. The next one is, 
I've talked about this before. I've talked about all these before, but this one's kind of a cheat because it is a mix of two foundations. Now, they both wear really well by themselves. I will say that. So you can pick and choose either one of these and you're gonna get a full day wearer and it's still gonna look good. But because of the shades and because I just love mixing, I tested it out and I always wear them together. It's the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Skin Tint. This retails for $17.99 on Ulta and it comes in 18 shades, which is the least amount of shades of all the ones that I'm gonna talk about. I got a shade that is too dark and I think I got 120. It's rubbed off on the front so I, I really can't tell for sure, but it was too dark on me. I made it work, but it wasn't very comfortable for me to wear, so I ended up mixing it with my Revlon Illuminance Skin Caring Foundation, which also retails for $17.99 on Ulta. And this one has 28 shades. I got the shade Beige 217 in this, and again, it was a little too light. Now, I do have a video where I use this, and it works. I can get it to work, but I just wanted a little bit more warmth added to it, so when I decided, okay, this is too dark, this is too light, let's mix them together and see, I absolutely adored the outcome adored so much. It is not super flat matte because these are both skin tints and the Revlon is specifically called Illuminance. So while it's not going to give you a super radiant dewy look, it still gives more of a natural finish than some of the matte ones that I'm going to talk about. And I do feel like my before and after was really good with this one and nothing was really patching off. I did not touch up any of these throughout the day. I did not even go in with like a press powder that I keep in my purse to bring down any shine. I did not touch them. I wanted to show you exactly how it looks after 11 hours of no fuss. And I feel like this one really always looks good for me. So again, they're great separate. But for me, I like mixing them. The next one I'm gonna talk about is one of my favorite finds this year. It's probably gonna show up in my favorites for the 2023 makeup finds. And it is from the brand Unleashia, and this is their Satin Wear Healthy Green Cushion Foundation. This is a K-Beauty brand. I got mine off of Stylevana. And then Unleashia ended up sending me one. I think I have two backups of this now. <laughs> which I'm so happy for. This one I wear a lot when I work. I don't know why, but I think just because I absolutely love the way it looks and I get super sweaty. I have a makeup light that I use when I work, so I'm I'm constantly in front of a light. A lot of times I'll have a window in front of me too. I am just going nonstop and I like tend to like just get hot when I work. And so I always want something that's gonna really stand the test of time. And this is what I've been reaching for lately. A couple of cons to this really, the major con is the amount of shades that you have to choose from. They only have four shades. I have noticed in K-Beauty complexion products, you do not have many shades to choose from. And it really goes from like light to, or fair to light medium, possibly medium. I would consider this, I'm in the shade Peach Tan 27W, which is actually the darkest shade. I would consider this to be more of a medium shade. This does retail for $12.99. It is only half of an ounce, but that still equals only $26 compared to some of these other foundations that I'm talking about if you were to compare it to the full ounce. It's not necessarily what I would consider a cushion foundation. You push on this side and an actual liquid foundation comes out right here. It does have a puff. I don't use it. I use a brush. And really, I can push this one time and that will cover my entire face. I really like this. It is a little bit warmer on my skin tone, but it still ends up working. And honestly, I feel like a lot of times people complain about not being able to find warm undertones in K-Beauty, and this one does not disappoint with that. So if you are my complexion or fairer, I would look into this because it truly does last all day on me. Next one we're gonna talk about, two more to go. This is from House Labs. This is the Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. This has the most amount of options to choose from as far as shades go. It has 51, if I counted correctly, shades to choose from. It retails for $45, and I am in the shade 200 Light Medium Neutral. I think a lot of people have had a hard time finding their shade in this foundation because they're a little bit backwards. If it says warm, it actually has the description of rosy undertones. And typically we think of rosy undertones being cool and more yellow undertones being golden. But this is kind of opposite. For instance, 340 medium cool is medium with cool golden undertones. 
So again, it's kind of backwards, but if you're familiar with like MAC foundations, that's backwards too to me. So you I really would just go with a neutral shade if you're not sure or go into store and kind of swatch them, see if you maybe can get samples. I don't even know if they're doing samples anymore, but it's not the easiest to find your shade if you are anything other than neutral. I typically go for neutral if I can, so this was a great match for me and is probably out of all of these the most natural skin finish. It is not radiant to me. I have seen people describe this as like a luminous foundation. To me, it is not. It's more of just a skin finish foundation. It is a solid, I would say medium to medium full coverage. I have a couple of blemishes that are healed, but the redness is still there. And one small layer of this covered it up very well. Pretty much everything I've talked about is a medium to a medium full coverage. This I find is buildable if you need to, but I don't think that I need to. I use about one and a half pumps for my entire face and neck, and it just lasts all day. And it looks good and again, natural. It's worked with every powder that I have used on top of it, every sunscreen. That's another thing. I use the same sunscreen. I use the Numbuzzin sunscreen under all of these. That was important to talk about. And I know that was a little bit of a sidebar, but saying sunscreen made me think of it. <laughs> so definitely an all day laster. I love the look of this. I have contemplated putting this in my kit as well, but I really need to get through some of the foundations that I have. And then the final one is the Chanel Ultra Latente Ultra Wear All Day Comfort Flawless Finish Foundation. I'm in the shade B30. This is obviously going to be the most expensive out of all the ones that I'm talking about because it is Chanel. It is $65. It comes in 35 shades and B30 is described as medium with neutral undertones. I would say it's neutral. It leans a little warm. It's not like straight neutral, but it is definitely not super golden either. Now I had mentioned in the NAR, when I was talking about the NARS soft matte that there was one that was a close second that I love as a mixing foundation. And this is one of them. I really love mixing this with the Chanel liquid illuminator. Any liquid illuminator really, again, if you wanted to dial it down and mix it with a tinted moisturizer or just a straight moisturizer, it works really well that way too. On its own, it is pretty matte but it is not a flat matte. It's kind of like the NARS where it is a softer matte finish, but it truly lasts all day. I do remember when I was testing this out for the before and after, it was actually on Halloween. I not only was out trick-or-treating on Halloween, but I also had a leg day workout that day, which if I'm gonna sweat in a workout, it's gonna be on my leg day. And so keep that in mind when you look at how it held up, but I just feel like I've never had an issue with this holding up throughout the day. And if you're someone who really just enjoys having luxury makeup, then this is the one that I would look at if you're wanting something that is going to stand up through pretty much anything for an entire day plus some. So all of these are ones that I pick when I go work or when I just wake up and I'm like, I have a really long day. I'm gonna be out and about. I'm doing my makeup really early and probably not gonna take it off till really late. I'm gonna choose one of these because I know they never fail. Now, if I had to choose one that is my favorite and I felt like held up the best out of all of them when I was looking at the before and afters, it would have to be house laps. It's what I have on my skin today. It just is truly a magnificent foundation. I have seen mixed reviews on this, but for me, it's beautiful. I have the concealer on today. I got that during the Sephora sale. It's really just truly a great foundation. So hopefully this was helpful. I thought it was a fun kind of top five topic. If you have another top five that you have in mind that you want me to do a video on, please let me know down in the comment section below. I will have everything listed and linked in the description box. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.